There we go. Hi, good morning. Okay. All right, I got a new camera. And so I'm sorry, I just have to adjust it for a second. I think that's better. Okay. Good morning, ladies. How's it going? Um, I'm so glad you could join me here today for the Sanctuary of Women. Um, we are going through uh, to try and call our spirits back to our bodies. That was, I just was reading a book the other day and they are saying that in Native cultures, when Native people experience traumatic things, that the medicine man or medicine woman or shaman or healer of the tribe would do a ceremony that they called a soul retrieval. And that was to call the person's soul back to their body. Because often when we experience traumatic things, the thing that happens is that we disconnect our body from our mind and our soul. And so that's what we are all about here is soul retrieval and calling our souls back to our bodies and doing it in a community where we feel loved and supported. And I hope that you feel that here. We are on chapter six of In the Sanctuary of Women. <clears throat> Actually, first we'll start with a morning prayer. Blessed are you, O oh God, who created the world in a word. <clears throat> and who fashioned your people from dust and from delight. In our waking, may we know you, breathing in us, breathing through us, creating us anew with your longing and love. And chapter six is a wanting woman. The notion of looking at our hungers as a map, as clues to the path ahead, may seem a foreign one. The story of Eve, after all, has been used in large as part of a cautionary tale against pursuing our desires, particularly as women. It's not a long trip. Some would have it from being a wanting woman to being a wanton woman. At the very least, there tends to be a perception, both for women and for men, that God's desires often run counter to our own, and that God calls us to pursue the path that is least appealing to us. It is true that God seems to have a penchant for working in bizarre ways, and that our resistance toward a possibility may indeed signal that God is drawing us in that direction. I say this as someone who actively did not want to become an ordained minister, who, as a 12-year-old girl, hearing her pastor preach about his call to ministry, was horrified by the thought that God might call me to such a path. I had my plan, and it did not involve preaching and whatever else pastors did. Yet, perhaps, far more often than we think, God works within our desires. My 12-year-old self found her way into ministry by pursuing the plan that I had. The passion that captured my heart and my imagination. That passion led me to the next one and to the next, not different calls, I finally realized, but rather a deepening of one that I had long been there. It is often difficult to be sure, to discern which of our desires belong to God and which are merely our own. To a great extent, the Christian tradition is right to teach us to be suspicious of our wanting, given how frequently our desires can deceive us. Yet, this same tradition also gives us practices that help us examine what it is we long for. Spiritual direction, Lectio Divina, fasting, prayer, these are among the practices that help us to recognize and listen to our hungers as the messengers that have been something to tell us. Oftentimes, a yearning lies buried beneath or within the initial desire, which makes this wanting thing so tricky. A desire that has a fondness for distinguishing itself, for not showing its true face away, right away. It can take sorting through many layers of yearning before the real one reveals itself. And as you draw from passion to passion, may God draw you deeper into the desires God has for you. 
And so that is going to be our practice today. We are going to start with our eyes closed. We're just going to start with some deep breaths in through the mouth and out. <clears throat> Inhaling deeply <clears throat> and exhaling deeply. Dropping in to our bodies and the sensations we have in our bodies right now. So maybe you're lying down, maybe you're sitting up with your back against the wall. Wherever you are right now, just take a minute to really feel the parts of yourself that are being cradled and touched and held up. And to notice the parts of yourself that are free and unbound where nothing touches but the air. In this class, everything I offer you is just an offer. So you can choose to move along with me or you can choose to move on your own and do whatever feels good to you. I only ask that you just breathe. Today we're going to start really deep or really surface and then we're going to move our way really deep into our practice. So let's just start with our hands. So wherever you are, if you can get your hands going, we're just gonna start by wiggling our fingers. And you could do that however feels good. I swear I never wake up with a runny nose except on Wednesday morning when we're together. <laughs> Apologize. What would it look like to roll your fingers and press them up into the sky? What about rolling your thumb? Taking your hands as wide as anatomically possible, and then bringing them in and curling them into a little fist. What does it feel like to feel your fingers? Let's move up to our wrists. Let's take our wrists and roll them out, and roll them in. Maybe if you connect the movement of your wrist with the breath. Inhaling, taking it in. And exhaling, rolling it out. How do your wrist feel today? Maybe you can move that up to our elbows. Maybe our shoulders. Letting our arms come out and stretch. 
Rolling our shoulders back. Maybe rolling your shoulders forward. This is your own practice. So you can experiment with moving your arms, your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists, your fingers, however you want to. You have permission. And I am not the grantor of permission. You always have permission to do whatever it is you want with your body. To do whatever it is that feels good for your body. Okay, maybe now we'll just take a little twist. So we'll take the hand to the knee, the left hand to the sacrum, and we'll twist. It open. Think about moving the ribs to the side of the body, so we're keeping both of our sit bones nice and square on the mat. Good. Draw the shoulders around. Take your gaze over that back shoulder if that feels good. Inhale through the nose. And exhale. Good. And come back to center. Maybe you're going to reach up this time. Stretch. And back and forth, bring in that. Good, maybe you need a back bend back. So we'll take the fingers to the back wall, draw our shoulder blades together, open up our heart space here. Good. What does it feel like to have your heart so open? How do you feel this in your body? As we breathe in this pose, the heart's open and our throat's open. The conduit between our brains and our bodies is wide open. So take this as a minute to check in. Maybe to ask yourself, what are some desires and longings that you have? You received my newsletter I wrote yesterday about desires and longings and the plans that God has for us and about how those can be the same. Okay. We're bringing that brain to the heart the heart to the brain, connecting them energetically through our throat. Maybe you want to speak your desire out loud. Maybe you want to say it for the first time ever. Good. Go ahead and exhale. Come forward. Reach the hands forward. Melting the shoulders down toward the ground. Keeping your hips grounded, reach through your fingertips so you can just let them reach out as far as they can go. Good, walk your hands back. Draw the shoulders back. 
Good, and we're just gonna take our cross the opposite way. So whichever leg was in front before, opposite leg comes in front now. Sitting up nice and tall. We're gonna take a twist this way. Opposite of whatever you just did. We're even on both sides of our body. If you twisted before, if not, do whatever feels nice to your body right now. Good, sits bones are nice and planted into the mat. And we're just taking our whole rib cage to the side wall, getting a nice deep detoxifying twist in. Notice how it feels in your body. Good, and come back to the front and walk your hands out. Stretch this time with the opposite foot in front. Helps your hips get nice and open. Breathing deeply. Good, walk your hands back, sitting up nice and tall. Good, we're gonna take our feet out now. Maybe your feet have already been out, maybe you um, have just been lying on your back, that's totally great. We're just gonna start by bending and flexing, and flexing and pointing our toes. So flexing and pointing. Again, we're going world surface right now, so that we can go deep in a minute. So we're just flexing and pointing, and maybe we're rolling our ankles. Good. 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 Then you want to shake your legs a little bit. How does that feel? Good. Getting that blood flowing and moving. You're going to shake a little bit up top, too. Feel a little shimmy. That might feel nice. Good. Inhale nice and tall, reaching for the skies. And then I invite you to bend the waist. Reach for the toes. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth or the nose. Whichever feels most appropriate for you. If you can't reach all the way to your toes, just wherever you can reach to. Good. They stretch down the back of the legs here. Good, you can release the toes and we bring our feet together and sit up nice and tall for bound angle pose. And so here, again, you can press your elbows down on the knees to get a deeper feel, a deeper stretch, if that feels good to you. And just have the soles of our feet together. You can peel the feet apart like a book and rub them if that feels nice. You could leave them together. It's up to you. If you'd like to 
kind of roll yourself forward in your hips, taking your torso forward, nice flat back, sinking deeper in to the ceiling of your hips here. Our hips are called the soap opera of the soul because they hold a lot of our emotions, a lot of our desire. So taking a deep breath into these hip spaces is a tapping in, if you will, to what we might want. Good. And from here, we're going to go ahead and take it over to all fours, bringing our big toes together, bringing our knees mat width apart, sending our hips back to our heels and reaching forward, melting the heart toward the mat, child's pose. Again, you're invited here. Take a deep breath. Take that breath into the hips. Melt the heart toward the thighs. Notice the invitation of your body to move. Good, and back up to all fours, and we're just going to bring ourselves forward, bring our feet up. It's called scorpion pose, and so it's a nice opening up and opposition pose, child's pose, opening up the heart, draw the belly to the spine, protect the back. Again, if this doesn't feel good for you, you don't have to do it. You stay back in child's pose. I'm going to exhale back to child's pose. Going to inhale up to scorpion. And exhale back to child. One last time, inhaling up to scorpion, opening the heart. And exhaling, taking it back to child. Opening the heart. Good. And when you're ready, and if you want to, we'll end lying on our back. <clears throat> Take it all the way down. Graceful as you can get there. Good. I'm going to walk my feet back toward my hips. I'm going to bring my shoulder blades together behind me, lifting my heart space off of the mat. Good. So we're just going to take legs up the wall. So just like before, you can do it here, or you can take your legs up to a real wall, take your hips up to a real wall, and move the legs back. Good. And to finish today out, we're going to start with plow pose. So having the heart lifted, shoulder blades together. If you'd like, you can join me to pull your belly into the side. And then lift the hips up off the mat and bring them overhead. Good. Option to bring them up toward the sky. Just overhead. 
and then up shift to draw and then back down to the mat one vertebrae at a time beautiful feel the breath moving through your body I'm going to end us with a blessing from the book. <clears throat> but you can just stay right there on your mat. You can spend some time with God if that is what you love, or you can spend some time really searching your heart, really searching your body right now. Or if you have some questions or you need to get a hold of me, you can come back on um, the chat or you can DM me later. Blessing is this. As you move from passion to passion, may God draw you deeper into the desires that God has for you. Amen. So may we be women who stop looking at our passions and our desires as something that's scary. May we start being women who move into the passions and the desires that we have and trust that the place we're going with those desires is a deeper, more fulfilled version of who we are meant to be on this planet. Thank you guys for joining me. Again, stay, breathe, enjoy your body. Namaste.